Stowaway, a brand new movie from Netflix about a three person crew on a mission to Mars who face an impossible choice when an unplanned passenger jeopardizes the lives of everybody on board. Now in a not too distant past, Netflix made The Midnight Sky another space movie which I stated on this channel was damn awful. And Stowaway I had higher hopes for. Anna Kendrick in there, Tony Collette. The trailer looked interesting, but it definitely got its flaws. And this movie might just be the stupidest movie I've ever seen in my life. Definitely the most flawed movie I've ever seen. And they just skip over major obstacles. I will say Anna Kendrick's in there. She's a very good actress. Tony Collette's in there. She's a very good actress. Daniel Day Kim is also the other member of the crew. He's pretty good in the movie as well for what he has to do. So the crew sets off on a mission. Now we don't see outside the ship. We don't see them have any prep. The movie just starts with the ship taking off, close up of Anna Kendrick, violently shaking, because the director clearly wanted to make his audience sick right from the start. If you suffer from motion sickness, do not watch this movie. This movie will give you headaches or it'll make you throw up just because of the opening where they're so violently shaking. Terrible choices right off the bat. And that's the thing with this movie. It might be the worst directed movie I've ever seen. I hope this director never makes another movie because he's being absolutely terrible with this one. That might be harsh, but it's damn true. So the crew takes off, they're going about their mission, setting about their routines, they establish who everyone is. Anna Kendrick's the doctor, Tony Collette's the captain of the ship, and Daniel Day Kim is like the, the guy who's gonna grow plants on Mars. Yeah, the guy who grows plants on Mars, I'm sure that's his official title. But they're going along doing their mission, and Tony Collette goes to somewhere, she sees some blood on the floor and thinks, that's strange. Or she looks up to a panel on the ceiling. There is clearly screws in this panel and Tony Collette has to use a screwdriver to undo this panel, okay? Just remember that. So Tony Collette unscrews this panel from the ceiling and out falls a man. So, that's th th that's where the guy comes from in the, in the movie. This man is just, behind this panel in the ceiling, which leads to so many questions. So this guy falls out of the ceiling as he's doing that. As he falls out, he ends up breaking like the life support system, because why not? So they all, Tony Clout is screaming, the other two crewmates come and they put this guy in a bed. Now, surely the first question would be, how did he get there? The second question would be, why was he there? The third question would be, why? There were screws in the panel, meaning someone had to put that panel there. They had to put the guy in the ceiling, put the panel on, screw him into the ceiling, and then just walk away with no one noticing. Like someone had to come along, see that guy up there. He, like he wasn't, it wasn't like a secret hidden space where he was hidden in the corner or something. No, he was just shoved up there, panel put on, screwed in. So you would think there's some murder mystery going on here. Who did it? Who put him in the space and screwed him into the ceiling? No, but they don't, they don't ask that at all. Cause they, the guy couldn't have screwed himself into the ceiling. So straight off the bat, really fucking stupid. And on top of that, someone like NASA or SpaceX or whatever space agency surely account for all of the people on their ship. Anyone who's working on the ship, they'd have a manifest of like, oh, here's this guy, this guy, this guy, everybody's off the ship, great, now we can launch. But apparently nobody asked, where's Michael? They just left him on the ship. Someone came along and screwed him into the ceiling, put the panel in front of him and screwed him in, knocked him out apparently as well because he was unconscious and he had no memory of how he got there. <sighs> so, it's just so stupid. The fact that there could even be this stowaway in the first place. As you see, I'm fairly worked up about it because it just makes no sense straight out the bat. Apart from all the other flaws in the movie, it makes no sense that he's screwed into the ceiling and it's not addressed at all in the movie. <laughs> so what happens is they put him in a bed and they go off and just do their own tasks. You know, he's, the doctor looks after him and all that stuff. And Anna Kendrick has to calm him down. The three crewmates are standing around him, asking him questions. And Tony Collette clearly says to him, what did you do on the pad, i.e. the landing pad? Showing that he was on the landing pad when they took off, he wasn't just on the ship that they docked with in space. And he clearly says, I was fixing this thing or that thing. I don't know the exact words he says, but he was fixing something and then he blacked out, he couldn't remember. That's pretty much as much as they address it. There is like another scene where right after that, they say, well, he couldn't have stowed away on purpose. And they don't address it ever again. They don't like ring NASA and be like, 
How did this guy get here? Oh no, we must have a murderer on the loose. Someone screwed a guy into the ceiling. No, they don't focus on that. They're just like, okay, there's another guy here now. Uh-oh, the oxygen isn't working. Uh-oh, not enough oxygen. Uh-oh, there's four of us, but there's only oxygen for two people, which is clearly the thing in the movie. There's enough oxygen for two people, four people on this ship. So, even the idea of the guy was unnecessary. He is the reason the life support breaks, but first of all, why did they not have a backup? Second of all, even if they just had the main three characters, they still wouldn't have enough oxygen. They still could have done the story without the stowaway and just not called the movie Stowaway. They could have called it Trouble in Space or Uh-oh, Not Enough Oxygen, throwing Anna Kendrick into space, the movie. They didn't need to call it Stowaway, they didn't need to have the Stowaway, and the Stowaway was really stupid. Well, on top of that, which I also mentioned, possibly the worst directed movie of all time, some of the choices are terrible. Some of the camera angles in the movie don't make a whole lot of sense, but that's obviously an optional thing from the director. The music is like some from a suspense-filled, horror movie, which this movie definitely isn't. It's more like a drama movie, but the music doesn't fit the movie at all. And then you've got the whole thing with the guy screwed into the ceiling that they just forget about. So the story is weak right off the bat. Then they have these scenes throughout the movie where someone on the ship is talking to someone on Earth, whether they're getting interviewed or they're talking to someone at NASA, say. You only hear one side of the conversation. One-sided phone calls always drive me crazy in movies. There's no need for it. But in this scenario, it was even worse. For example, there's a scene where the three people, the three main crew, before they find the stowaway, they're getting interviewed on TV. And they're in space, but they're all just sitting there, and you hear a gentle muffle, of, and then someone responds to it. Like Tony Collect is their full answer. And then all of a sudden, you hear another little muffle, and Andrew Kendrick po pops up, and then she answers her question, and then another muffle, and Daniel Day Kim, he perks up a little bit and answers his question, but we don't hear the other side of the conversation, which just leads to some really awkward silences throughout the movie. And also throughout this movie, there's awkward silences filled with moans and groans and grunts and just really unnecessary sounds throughout the movie. I don't know why it's in there. And for a space movie, it takes a long time till we actually get outside the ship. It's probably like an hour into the movie when we finally get outside the ship and we see some of space. Inside the ship, you see like the earth going by the window super quick at some point because the ship is spinning to create an anti-gravity, which I don't know if that's the way anti-gravity works. I'm not a scientist, but all the movies are doing it now. So I assume they're getting information from NASA of like, yeah, that's how you do it. One thing that the Midnight Sky did much better is that when they were showing space, they actually like showed the ship, showed the other planet, showed some sci-fi elements. This movie doesn't quite do that as well. But the base idea of, I guess, a conundrum in space of we have to get rid of somebody and they try different things and all the different things fail. The core idea of having to sacrifice someone is an interesting story, but this movie has so many unnecessary elements. The stowaway element of the movie, completely unnecessary and one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in the movie. As I say, a man was screwed into the ceiling, had a panel put in front of him, he was pushed into a panel, a panel pushed in front of him, it screwed into the ceiling, and nobody ever thought to say, where's Michael gone? Nobody was like, oh, because there's someone missing, we better look for them before we take off, and no one, even afterwards, were like, well, Someone knocked this guy out and put him in a press in the ceiling. Maybe we should look into that. Even they just water over why Michael was in that space or how did he get there or why did someone come along, see him there and just go, oh, he's probably supposed to be there. Let's put the panel back in. <sighs> so stupid. The weird thing is the pacing of it wasn't too bad. The movie goes by pretty well and it doesn't take too long to get to the end. But overall, it's just so, it's just so damn stupid. Stowaway. It's the lowest rating I've ever given so far on the movie film show channel. It gets a 2 out of 10. But I'm sure this movie's got a split opinion. Some people will see past the stowaway part, even though it's really stupid. And some people will agree with me that this is one of the stupidest movies ever made. But regardless of where you sit with this movie, I want to know all about it in the comments section. Will Netflix ever make a good space movie? Who knows? And if you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button for new content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. New movie reviews all the time. And all that said and done, thank you so much for watching.